Welcome to this tutorial on packages, modules and libraries in Python. And this time I'm gonna assume that you are familiar with the first steps in Python, so you know how to work, walk in Python, and that you have also an idea of what are Python functions, so that's this section here um, on hydroinformatics.com. If you are working locally or in your web browser, um, doesn't matter, please open now here the Jupyter Notebook called b05py package. For importing a package or a, model, a module, you have seen already basic commands here. I was making reference uh, and for instance, already to the logging package in the error and debugging section. And here now we're starting with the import OS module. So the OS package here is basically a, um, a basic fundamental uh, package of Python that is always available. What it does here is it provides you with basic system commands. So if for some reason in your Python script you want to get information or run uh, commands that you would basically write in terminal or command line in Windows, then you can use the OS package probably in combination with the so-called sys package. Uh, for us here, one very uh, useful way to use, uh, to use the OS package is uh, for instance, to see where we are actually, actually working. Why is that useful? Well, let's say you have data stored somewhere on your computer. And this data can be referred to um, relatively to your Python code, if it's living in a subdirectory or something referable, one le level up and then coming there. But you can also use an absolute path. And the absolute path can be either get here with the os.path.upspath uh, function that gives you the directory of where the script is running and then the get cwd current working directory uh, function prints you where you're actually working. So maybe you switched or changed directory through these commands here and you're not anymore here in the uh, directory where your uh, Python code is currently running. But if you want to switch back you can do that with the upspath function. So now already I have been um, switching sometimes words between um, package, module and library. What's the difference between them? Well, a module is basically just one Python script. So if I have one Python script that I call a module.py, then I can just type import a mod module if that module is somewhat accessible to my um, Python interpreter. So if here in that course example I have a script that lives directly here on the same level as where my Jupyter notebook lives, then I can just write here a module.py, also where the Jupyter installation directory is, so my personal folder. If I'm talking about a package, then I am basically talking about an entire folder and in that folder then there is a so-called uh, init.py file and that um, makes Python understanding that that folder is a package. And then I can import from the package name, so the package name would ben, then be the uh, folder name. From that I can then import a module and the module would then be just a uh, Python script. And maybe then that Python script I have a particular function that I defined and that one that I want to re reduce. So I can write some and then something like from a package.module import that particular function. If you have a library, well a library is basically even more con uh, complex than a package. So you have some method um, uh, folders in a library, always then with that init.py file. So let's go to the bottom slowly, step by step of this section and 
if that sounds still fuzzy to you now, I hope that it doesn't sound to you uh, fuzzy anymore at the end. I've just mentioned a couple of options for importing uh, packages, libraries or modules. Um, um, the very basic command here is to use import the package name. Just pay attention here. I wrote package, package hyphen name. No package in Python will ever have a hyphen that has a different functionality. So at maximum you have got an underscore. And then I can use attributes of that package by typing in my code package.name or item or whatever that is in. What is very common is to use a nickname for a package. So import package name as a nickname that is used for example, for example here in that following example with matplotlib.pyplot. So that's very long. Huh? But uh, so instead of writing every time here matplotlib.pyplot and then get some command of that, like the plot uh, function, um, I just import it here with an alias, alias that I call it. PLT, so nickname or alias, however you want to name it. I can also import from one package just one particular item, um, which is preferable when you exactly know what you want. If you want to import all items from one package without the need then in the code to write the um, package name anymore, you can just write the star sign, but this needs to be handled with care because you can then basically overwrite basic um, functions in your Python interpreter without even realizing it. So let's have a look here at a simple example of importing here a plot from the matplotlib pyplot. And I'm importing here math as m, so very uh, short. What I'm doing here, I'm defining two lists. Then I'm iterating on the two lists and I'm appending here values from 1 to 10 to list x, so my x values, and then I'm taking the power to 2 of x here, or the e value as y values. So how would that look like? Well, that's just a squared function. I just mentioned that when you're importing a package or a module, you want to be pretty explicit about what you're doing. So if, for example, now you define here pi equals 9.112 in a function or in, a, in, a, in your own package, and you print that here, now you wrote it here as 9.112. Now if you import from math pi, it will overwrite your function name, or your, sorry, your variable name. If now you do that the other way around, so you're losing the correct value of pi, that can be dangerous. Or you're using another variable name that is also defined in the math package, and then you would, would write um, from math import star, so rather than this here, you would even not realize that you overwrote the pi variable. Now consider you're working with a module, you, uh, you imported it, and now you want to know exactly what's in your model. There is a pretty nice way to see what is in your module, and that is uh, writing here the dir command or the dir function. That also works with uh, variables, so you can apply it, for instance, here to this into a string variable, and we'll show you all the built-in functions of a string variable. So everything that you've seen until now, that dot underscore underscore len, or if you're working in an iterable, then it has this underscore underscore iterable built-in function. And that is all printed when you type dir. So that here first just shows what are my system paths. Why could those be interesting? Well, if you want your system to recognize a module that you wrote or if, uh, or a package that you wrote and it is not here in one of these folders, it will not be able to recognize it. Well, let's say in one of these folders or in the current folder where you're working on, so in that folder of the Jupyter Python course. 
Then the second block here in that code block here, I just define a string, didn't matter what I put in the string, but it gives us now here all the built-in functions of a string variable. So you have already seen in the very beginning here the upper um, built-in function that would just then put and capitalize every letter. Similarly, there's a lower function, then you've seen already the split function and the strip function, and there are many others. If you want to find out what they do, um, just use here now the and this little code block. Um, maybe type then just uh, split, split it maybe with a GL, and that's then what you get. At one point in your programming career, you will probably want to switch from just using modules or packages or libraries from others and write your own modules and packages and libraries for reusing them. So making use of that object orientation implemented in Python. We will now have a short look at a very simple module. We'll call the module ice cream dialog. So that is what should be in the ice cream dialog file. So it should be a Python script that should be called ice cream.py. So you either can go here now to the Jupyter um, notebook uh, repository and then create here a new file or um, I prepared it already in a way here. So you can just now here yeah, right click on, on that and then save link as um, navigate then to your Jupyter uh, folder that lives somewhere here in, for me it's my user folder here, so it's here my user Jupyter folder, there's where I clone the repository to, and I'm gonna save here the ice cream dialog um, Python script. So either that or you create here a new Python file and call it ice cream dialog and now it lives here. If you create it here, then you need to copy that code block into it. If you need some more time, then just stop the video here. Otherwise, uh, directly continue and import here now the ice cream dialog as ICD. And now we can access variables that I defined here in that ice cream dialog Python script. Um, with a dot separate. So I would write now here icd dot welcome message and that is what I will get. So in that case here I'm using the print, print function to get some feedback of the code. So I'm using here that makes zero da -da, uh, from um, the icd price scoops, scoops wanted. So I defined here the scoops that I wanted. Then here I'm calling here uh, the icd.pricescoops dictionary with the scoops wanted that were two and I get here the answer of three euros. Now I want that uh, ice cream dialogue script maybe not only to be imported as a script, I maybe want to run it directly standalone so that I would type then maybe in a terminal something like a python ice cream underscore uh, uh, sorry ice cream dialog underscore standalone.py and it should just run. In order to make it run and do something then it needs something like here this if name statement. These parentheses here are not really needed. What is important here is that there's if name equals equals main statement. Then we'll run here through that script and uh, and print what I did here in this name statement. So we'll use here the welcome message. So I'll put here all flavors and then it will use here, define here the scoops that I wanted and then use here um, that makes so and so on dollars as a function or euros as a function of what you provide here to it. At this moment, I invite you to take a break, open your terminal, your PyCharm terminal, um, or if you're working with Adam, 
uh, you can use the platform UID terminal to run Python with that standalone script defined. To make your standalone script a little bit more flexible, you can also make it running with input parameters. So for that, let's define an ice cream dialog standalone with input.py file. So you can create that again here in Jupyter Lab here, or you directly um, go to PyCharm now and you create uh, your ice cream dialog.py or um, sublime text or whatever you use for as a um, Python editor. Um, take again here that code block that now contains here a dialog function and it will call then here in that name main statement when it is called the dialog function. The dialog function here has access to the to all global functions of that script. So flavors, price, scoops and welcome message. One thing that would be important now here, if you define scoops wanted already ahead, then the namespace here in the dialog function here would override that scoops wanted uh, function. So if you're using some smart IDE, um, by term spider, whatever, um, they will probably prompt you a warning that you're overwriting the global namespace here within the namespace of the dialog function. So to check how that works, I invite you now to create that new Python script. Um, the best then to copy that script here is to double click here on that cell and then just uh, copy the script. Paste it then into the Python standalone with input.py file, save it, and then go back to terminal and run it with whatever input uh, you want. So it is designed for running with an integer input that it gets here for scoops wanted, prints then a welcome message and uh, calculates the price of dollars as a function of what you provided. Again, it can only use now what you define here in price scoops. So please go ahead and modify that code block here to what is convenient for you. Play a little bit around, modify the dialogue, modify the answers you can get. With that ice cream dialogue standalone and so on, you created now modules for using with for usage with Python. Now, how do you get from that module to a package? Initially, I mentioned that a package is uh, characterized by a folder that contains an init.py file. That init.py file can basically be empty. Important is just that it is in the folder so that Python can recognize that there is an init.py file. Then you may add here different Python scripts, um, which you wa may want to do because you do not want to write scripts that have 1000 lines of code, rather keep it short and organized with descriptive names. So for instance, here we can have the ice cream dialogue, which is the dialogue maybe with the ice cream vendor, and then there can be an ice cream maker, so something that creates a virtual ice cream in a Python script. So the init.py could now be empty, but we can also add something here um, to, uh, to import specifically items here from the um, from the package, which um, I would uh, rather not recommend like uh, that because there's a smarter way than, uh, than that of doing that. So that would be to add that here to the init.py. So add this all uh, keyword here. And this all is then basically uh, describing what Python should import from your package when you're using this blank asterisk import. First, just here, sorry for jumping around here. If you're importing now the ice creamery uh, module, then you can call now one script here. So the ice cream dialogue script. And if it has the welcome, welcome message here, then you can get it here by writing another dot and referring here to the ice cream message. 
So now back here to the all statement and these um, uh, avoid imports here with the asterisk sign. Um, that means here it now knows only the ice cream dialog and ice cream maker um, script and will not import anything else from your uh, um, from the definitions in the folder. So if we defined here by accident a Python script that is called os.py and you type now um, the star sign, but you have defined here that all uh, uh, that all keyword like that, it will not overwrite your OS package. Um, either way, you do not want to create never ever a Python script that is called os.py or sys.py. Don't do that. What you can also do here is to um, play a little bit with the logging module. So if you have now already uh, some Python scripts running, implement here a logger and um, replay in place maybe the name here of the module that want to log and uh, figure out uh, what that results in. One hint here if you want to reload or re-import a package or module, which um, in my experience only makes sense if you are uh, developing, debugging, troubleshooting something in your current Python console and you want to reload your script working, uh, check if it works now, uh, you can just uh, uh, import here the import lib script and then import.reload my module will then re-import your module. Um, not super meaningful and more like in hint here. Thanks for watching this video on packages and modules.